And welcome back once again to Let's Play Rome Remastered. Yes, here we are once again in the world of Rome, where we will hopefully uh, have some success today. It's ten past nine in the evening. I finished playing football. I'm not uploading this until tomorrow. Tomorrow being Friday, when you should hopefully be seeing this. If all goes according to plan, which means there's no rush for me to get the session up on the same day. I've got my streaming set up with the lights and everything, and I'm just, I just thought I'd enjoy a nice hour-long, at least, session of Rome after a day of football and a busy day at work as a way to finish off and unwind for the evening. That is, unless something goes horribly wrong. But I'm not planning on that happening. We're going to do very well. We shall achieve what we set out to achieve our enemies will bow down to us in fear and subjugation it'll be more it'll be marvelous it'll be marvelous right off camera i've just done some building work i've trained the agents had them assassinate and spy on nondescript targets to raise their subterfuge levels which means i can focus the start of the session on the important matters what important matters, you might say, if you've foolishly not watched the previous episode? Well, of course, a matter of taking Tarentum, which Bizaltus is taking in two bites. The first bite, he weakened the Brutii by eliminating some of their Principis, their Hestati, and more importantly, their Gladiators. Uh, he then tactically withdrew, allowing his men to replenish, allowing his elite slingers to scour the area for more rocks and then he's laid siege again to hopefully take it this time so that's the plan and that's the opening gambit in the next turn <laughs> apparently because it's time for us to end the turn because I've done everything that I need to do which means that we shall end the turn and see what calamities befall us and this is where my planned evening of serenity goes up in flames. Let us end the bloodshed. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the Skippy Eye. So many years after they turned their blades on us. Having been ousted from Sicily, seeing their brothers and neighbours, the Brutii, falling to the mighty Bizaltes. They now come, cap in hand, begging for a ceasefire, offering us almost 10,000 denarii. <laughs> I mean, I thought about it for all of a millisecond. <laughs> as much as 8,000 denarii would be very nice, it simply is not enough. You could give me 20, 30, maybe even 40,000 denarii, and it would not be enough. We do not accept your dirty money, you Roman scumbags. We simply want your lands. Okay? So thank you, but no thank you. Until next time. <laughs> My God, they must be pooping their pants and getting desperate. Wow. First the Gauls, a couple of sessions ago, and now them. The Brutii I will next be knocking, eh? Please, can we have a se Well, obviously we knew that was happening. <clears throat> Get a surprise. Oh, hang on, they're sallying forth now? Well, this is a turn up. Or maybe they're not. <laughs> I thought they were sallying forth. Okay, some stuff has happened here. I heard the sound of a of, 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 a, of a siege that wasn't actually over here. It wasn't that one. There was some sort of siege going on up here. I thought I heard the sound of the siege, but obviously not. Right. Okay. Let's check. Let's check. 
are alert. So Cyrene has been besieged. The plague continues to affect the Serta from memory. We have a family tragedy. Zemrida gets a silk merchant and also a mathematician. Theages gets an artist. Do they already have one of them? I can't remember. Anyway, what we'll do is we'll check out Zimrida because, as I have said past couple of sessions, he's kind of been groomed <laughs> to be our next leader, you know. Let's look at him. He's 18. He's got five management. Teetotal. He had this kind of very stoic, very much a, sort of a distant man. But he's uh, positive. You know, he's... Uh, he's uh, what's the word? He's got, he's got morals. You know, teetotal. He's got this standard. But he is very pleasurable to work under due to his positive atmosphere. A good motivator. And as a result of being in um, Lily Bay, not Lily Bay, is it Lily Bay? Yeah, Lily Bay. With its uh, academy, is it getting uh, extra followers to boot? So, yeah, mathematician, extra management, silk merchant, extra bonus to trade income. Freeman Clark, he's got previously, extra management. Uh, you know, definitely learning from the master, which is uh, Theages, whose old age is creeping in. He's got grey hairs in his beard now. He's losing management ability, but hey, he's been a, a very, very hard-working member of the family. Very wise man. Okay, so again, as usual, what I'll do is, well, I, I'm going to end more than one turn this session, I hope, so I'll have to do some of the building stuff on camera today, So I'll, but I'll do that after we've got the exciting stuff out of the way first. So I thought that they were sort of getting ready to attack us here, because the, 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 the end turn lingered for a while on them, but uh, they're not, so... We will continue to lay siege here, continue to starve them out and see what they do. Should be fun. Uh, everywhere else here is fine. We're just trying to free up uh, New Mantia so that we can get down to Corduba as quickly as possible. So to do, to do that, there's a couple of, there's three, a three prong, a pronged attack on this. First of all, we're taking these guys up to help garrison which is the first prong of the attack. The second prong of the attack is we're actually recruiting peasants in Numantia. That's the second prong. The third prong of the attack is to counter-spy and oust the enemy agent that's in here. That's, now there's two of them who are obviously causing some kind of a scene in here. So let's just test the waters again, just very briefly. Yeah, 11%. That is absolutely just not serviceable at the moment. So we're almost there. We're almost there. Just a couple, a few more turns till we get the, all of the pieces of the puzzle in order to hopefully bring stability to Numantia. Um, and then we'll get Theopanus down to, 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 to Corduba as quickly as we can. So that's the situation over in Iberia. The situation down here is, uh, well... Theo Decalus has finally got to get his hands dirty again, and he's trundling his way, first of all, towards this fella, Milk Pillis, who is the last remnants of the Numidians, if you can remember those guys from way back when, before we just killed them off. Yeah, but he's still standing. 34 just causing devastation in the area. It's about time we put him down. Sire. En route to putting ourselves here in a fortification as a staging post to our attacks into Egypt. So uh, he's on his merry way. So that's going to be in the next turn. We engage in, in combat there. I'm kind of reluctant to... These guys were supposed to be heading into the territory of Egypt to keep an eye on stuff, but I'm kind of reluctant to take them too far because I want to keep an eye on what's happening here and indeed if this army indeed then moves out. So we'll have to, just, I'll just keep them here until Theodeclus comes, puts his watchtower here, puts his fort here. Once we've got that in place, these guys will continue to push uh, further eastwards and deeper into the Egyptian territory. But for now, just a bit of a, a bit of a rest bite, a bit of a rest stop until we get the situation sorted here. So that's the situation down in the uh, Egyptian uh, zone. Now 
There was a Julii ship that we were about to attack, which seems to have vanished. It had like three units on it. It's nowhere to be seen. I thought it might have been this one, but it's not this one either. There's nobody on that one. This one has come from Suggester. So... Ready to sail. Set sail. We shall continue with our plan, which is to, was to kind of just sit here uh, and do nothing other than keep an eye on now both ports, but I kind of don't want to leave one of them unblockaded, so we'll blockade one of them just to cut the Julia's income a little bit, so we'll blockade that one, but we can still keep an eye on that one whilst we're here, so that's fine. You were the attack fleet, actually, <clears throat> that was supposed to be in this area anyway, so we'll bring you back down this way, over the top, and you'll have you patrolling there as a as a, as a sword fleet, just keeping an eye on anything that passes by here. Uh, and, our, uh, and our final sword fleet is just maintaining a blockade on the uh, uh, Brutii's port of Apollonia. And now, come to think of it, I think that sound that I heard that I thought was a siege was actually uh, the blockading of this port. So. Yeah, we've got the Julia, we've got the Brutii's port blockaded, soon hopefully taking Tarentum, so they really are significantly crippled right now. Which leads us on to the first act of the of, of the session, and that indeed is to hopefully finally take Tarentum the second time of asking. So Bizaltes Hop to it! Of course, in the night time, because why wouldn't we? Alte sedente civilis vulner dextre. In my best Latin tongue. This is a day of oh, We don't need to we don't need to repeat. We know that we know the drill. This is a repeat scenario. Literally to the point where well, actually we don't even need to ram. They haven't even fixed their walls yet <laughs> from the last time. We will ram the gates though. And thankfully they've still brought up some of their uh, troops here. None of their gladiators though. In fact, all of their gladiators are in the city square. Which is like... Is this their last gasp? Yeah, all of them are in the city square. This is going to... Which is actually, technically speaking, the best thing that they could have done. This is the best thing that they could have done because we, we're not going to get with our... Uh, slingers right now. They're going to fight to the death in the square. And with all of them combined, I don't have the, 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 the infantry to deal with that at all. And as we also saw in a battle in the square, my horses, getting them to try and do charges is very tricky. So, technically speaking, this is the best thing that they could have done. Your which is and the battling ram are at the gate. very annoying. Now comes the, test of their courage. the very, very slight saving grace is I have a full contingent of ammunition with my slingers. But getting them to, 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 to pepper them is going to be difficult. We've, we've lost slingers in the past because of pathfinding. This is going to be tough. This is going to be tough. Dealing with these people, piece of cake. Even dealing with the general is going to be a piece of cake because we're going to uh, we're going to we're going to flank him basically. Set, set some spears this side. Set some spears this side, or wherever he decides to to move to, and pincer him from both sides with spears. So that. That shouldn't, soldiers have broken the enemy that shouldn't be too bad. We've got peppered with uh, 
with Peeler, unfortunately. Uh, and continue to get peppered with Peeler, which is not good, because we need as many infantry as we possibly can get here, given the circumstances. So that's rather irksome. Get the slingers into position. Yeah, when we need every last single piece of inf you know, every last man, every last infantry member alive to deal with the gladiators, getting half of them peppered with, uh, you know, with Peeler is not ideal. What I should have perhaps done before smashing the gates down, in hindsight, was um, peppering these guys with my rocks first to drive them away from the gates. Mistake on my part. But nonetheless, we are where we are. Right, lovely. You lob peeler, we lob rocks. Closer. That'll do me. That'll do me very nicely. So this is a very similar situation to what we faced in the last battle. Only it won't go on for as long because there's not as many men to uh, to deal with. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Coming back for sec they're coming back for second helpings here. Oh no, they've, they've thought better of it. What about you? What about you people? No, no, still coming. Your gladiator friends have more common sense than you, I'm afraid. They've gone into the city square. Perhaps you should have done something similar. Not that I'm complaining. I feel their pain. I feel their pain from here. <clears throat> right. Your men have taken the walls. Now the way to your victory is clear. Thirty triari versus one hundred and forty Iberian infantry. Probably still not quite enough, is it? Oh, the gladiators are coming out. Some of them are coming out. This is perfect. Keep coming, my friends. Keep coming. Ready. Just want to be careful that we don't waste too much ammunition on these guys because we can probably take them with our infantry now. So uh, I'm going to actually manually manage them uh, now because... Um, don't want to waste any rocks or as many into the uh, Velite gladiators as we can get. Yeah. Got some, uh, got some uh, gladiators coming down here. Some gladiators coming down here. This is all very good. Fire, no fire. I mean, 25 men. I think we can just about uh, get away with that. Uh, how, many, how many men here? 
58 gladiators. So it's the gladiators now that we want to kind of tempt forward if we can Infantry. with our bait. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Get these guys baited. Got some more coming out as well. So this is working out nicely. The less that the, the less that keeping that keeping the square, the better. Now we can cope with two lots in the square. Ten triari. Doubt they're going to cause any issues. And of course, it's the gladiators. I mean, I can't see that. I can't see them. We're standing an attack now, surely. You kill you. They're trying. Jesus. Okay, I've got to give them their props. They're trying. Victory seems certain. Ten of them. Please tell me this is a joke. Okay, very good. <laughs> For a moment there, I'm thinking, hang on a second. This is not the film 300 or whatever it was called. Uh oh. May have strayed a bit close to the gladiators there. It's fine. It's fine. We go. That's it. Draw them in, boys. Draw them in. It's all part of the Grandmaster plan. Seeing as they're, seeing as they're already depleted, this is my uh, designated bait for the rest of this battle. Apologies. Right, here we go. Right, as like in the last battle, I, I'm going to spare you too much of this because I don't want to get some other stuff recorded today. So I'll uh, I'll cut back to when I'm uh, in the city and about to start attacking. Oh sh no 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 no! Oh God's sake! This is ridiculous. I'm making a hash of this. This is what you get when you record at these hours. Your brain goes to mush. Ah. Okay. Anyway, as I said, I'll cut to when all my cylinders are dead. Alright? See you in a minute. Okay, folks, we're pushing in. <clears throat> You've got rid of a couple of the ability, uh, ability gladiators from this side. These guys we haven't got rid of yet. Units. They're coming round. Units, and they're going to engage our Libyan spears here. We should be able to pepper them in the backs whilst they're engaging, so this shouldn't be too much of a problem, I'm hoping. As soon as I start firing. Six, come on. Just gotta be patient here. Here we go, in the backs. Ooh, this is we're losing a lot of spear here. They've been pushed too close to the wall now. We can't get them with the damn slingers. Push him in. 49 winded. Oh, 
42. 40. Come on. Right, point blank range here. Literally point blank range. Right in the backs. Come on, lob it in. There we go, that's finished him. That's finished him. Stop firing, stop firing, stop firing, stop firing, stop firing. Stop firing, stop firing. We got him, we got him, we got him. Oh, we lost uh, quite a few spearmen there, more than we were hoping for. But we're in. The generals are retreating to the square. The last gladiators have been dispatched. Right. We, we essentially now push into the city. my horses in as well simply because we might be able to get some flanking maneuvers sorted with the horses all gathered up in one area and of course I want these slingers in because we want to pepper these guys in the backs as much as we can so if we come in here with the infantry if we can get them bottled up at this side bring the slingers from this side should help us are we on eight minutes Right, slingers, get yourselves up here. Horses can stay there for now. Wow, my slingers are nowhere near getting into position here. Nowhere near. The infantry are ambling around like they're on vacation. This is just so close. This is going to be very close indeed. I'm going to take my infantry, or my spears probably, in here. It's going to sort of draw some engagement and bring my slingers in from this side to pepper into the melee. That's the plan. They have to get forward. And they have to go quickly. Ideally, I want my spearmen to be at the front because the horses are probably going to come first. And the spear would be the best men for the job. So we're not going to get impatient here. As soon as we get into this fight and get the slingers peppering them, they'll, their numbers will dwindle quickly. It's just a case of getting everybody into position, including the horses. Wow, the towers are absolutely hitting us hard now. This one's just suddenly come alive all of a sudden. What are these horses doing? I have no clue. Oh my god. This battle. Me and Sieges, we just don't get on very well. Sieges, just, just not our forte. By any stretch of the imagination. It's absolute mayhem here. Just get, just get the cavalry out of the way of the line of fire. Just just, just come up here, please. Seriously. Six minutes. Sincerely hope we can replenish these troops in this settlement. I didn't check what buildings were available. Because we're making an absolute right hash brown of this. Absolute pig's ear of this entire situation. Right. We have two sets of Iberian infantry. Libyan spear. Libyan spear. Right. <clears throat> Right, we're getting them in now. We're going to have to execute this plan. We've got reserve infantry should we need them. Slingers are almost in position. Horses for, for, for charges if necessary. Take 
take them out because they're not even they're not even anywhere nearby, are they? Uh, right. Get them on the square. Get, as soon as they touch the square, these guys are going to pounce into action. Here we go. Here we go. There's a lot of men here. A lot of men. Come on! Get your asses in the square now! We need the general to go down. This is going so horrendously bad, it's not even comical. Come on, just get into position if you can. We need to get to the backs of these gladiators. Well, I think we've just about done it, but it's been an absolute uh, struggle. Which I did say it was going to prove to be a very difficult fight. And all the sweeter for being so decisive. In the grand scheme of it, we lost, what, 600? No, 400 men. That's not bad, because we got a lot of them back. A lot of them back because of the Karugan, so in the grand scheme of it, it's 
it's probably not as bad as we think, and most of the losses are infantry, which are probably going to be replaceable. If not in Tarentum, definitely in Croton. So we can send the infantry back to Croton if necessary to, to replenish. So, you know, it's not as bad as it may seem. It's messy, lost a lot of infantry, but not as bad as it may seem. First of all, we're going to check the building here. It's a level 4 army barracks, which actually gives us access for the first time to Peony infantry. Actually, so replenishing these lost troops is going to be not a problem. Uh, when it comes to the horses, we can train and replenish the long shield and the round shield cavalry. This is a highly developed settlement, which is absolutely fantastic. So anything that we've lost in that battle, we're going to replenish literally in uh, in one turn, essentially. We've got all our lost horses back because of the Karugan anyway. We've got several of our Balearic Slingers back that we lost to, because of the Karugan. Absolutely fantastic. So in one turn, we're going to be back to full strength. And of course, we're not going to pass up on the opportunity to also recruit some peony infantry uh, for the first time as well. So uh, Bizaltes is is licking his chops right now, it must be said. Absolutely licking his chops. Uh, excellent stuff. Right, uh, that's perked me up a bit because, boy, that was a tough one. So let's look at the buildings and see what we're going to do. So first of all, we're going to have to destroy uh, their, um, their religious building. So let's go and destroy that, shall we? Do they have a religious building? Present? No, they flipping well don't. Given how advanced this place is, I think I'm going to turn this into our military stronghold in Italy. So I'm going to actually put here a temple to a ball, so we can get to, eventually can get those lovely um, sacred band. Uh, we're going to upgrade uh, the, the, the defences eventually. In fact, we should probably repair the walls ourselves first, because there's holes in it, uh, and then get the temple. We will get some more of these basics as well before we start pumping our <clears throat> coin into, uh, into... Look at that. Look at that. Into uh, into some of these military buildings. But yeah, this is a great opportunity for us to have a proper military stronghold here. And we're going to switch, uh, as a result of that, we will switch Gisco Gades to, to become governor of Tarentum because he can be the one that ends up uh, feeding replenishment troops to uh, Bizaltes for his campaign. So, uh, yeah, this is really, really good. Really, really good indeed. Right, I don't know how long this is going to take us up till because I'm going to cut a lot of that fight out. But uh, we'll probably be around about 40 minutes if I was to have, if I was to have a guess. So we've got uh, the replenishments happening. We've got the building work happening here. The tax rate we're going to stick right up to very high and we've got now 20,000 in the coffers which means we can now go around our land and focus on some of the building work get that done and what we'll end up doing is finishing the session off uh, with uh, this probably this battle here which hopefully will be a hell of a lot smoother than what we've just faced but yeah what we'll do now is we'll just do some of the housekeeping so Asterica normal tax orange face finishing off its sewers that's done Scalabus nothing to build Orange face, that's done. Down here, nothing else to do, that's done. No Mansia building. Tax rates are fine, that's also done. Carthago Nova, red face, let's take the tax rate down, then that's done. I serve your that's will. done. They're not coming out of their little hidey hole, therefore that's done. I was kind of intrigued as to whether we would be able to send uh, Masanita down to bribe Cordova back, but uh, I don't think I wish to, even if it was possible, to be honest with you. We'll do some training if we can, spying on low-level targets. Spying. Okay, nothing doing there. But he will continue to spy here, just to, just to keep an eye on any goals that sort of wander on through. So Iberia, building works, taxes, all looking spiffing. Very high tax rate there, that's fine. Palma, normal's fine. Still a plague in Serta, that's also fine. In Midi, yep, that's building. Nepta, everything there is a-okay. So then let's have a look at the situation. Ships are moving into position. Corallis can't build anything else right now. That's a benefit. The tax rate is already on very high, so that's 
done and dusted. Carthage is finishing off its uh, temple, awesome temple, I'll have you know, of Baal Thapsus finishing off its ship. Right, oh no, it's Dockyard. I do apologise. Let's this Magna. Right, there we go. More military buildings. Armour, please. No problem, says I. Lilibeum, Messana, Syracuse, all building. Tax rates in order, in order, in order. All the ships are where they need to be. And therefore, that's... That was quick housekeeping, wasn't it? Very easy peasy. What we're going to do now, though, is we're going to train our... Uh, Briarius the Killer. Train him to take down easy targets to get him as close to possible uh, to, to, to that 10 subterfuge. 95%. Death approaches. It's more like it. Off. Down he goes. Another one bites the dust. Who shall die? Hannibal the Killer? Spurious of Suggester shall He's die this day. Man. If you don't mind. Oh, another one bites the dust. And a trait increase. Let's take a look at him now. I kill to please you. It didn't give him much else, did it? He's still the same. Master of Assassins. Bizaltes. Oh, this is Bizaltes! Because he's commissioning this to happen, Bizaltes actually gets the tra gets a trait. Um, let's have a look. Master of Assassins. Plus one to influence, which takes his influence to a whopping nine. Uh, and plus two to personal security. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. My eyes are yours. My eyes are yours. Okay, still keeping an eye on the last of the Brutii settlement, which we will confirm is that their last settlement. There's territory. Does that indicate two or does that indicate three? Does that indicate, sorry, two or does that indicate one? That looks like two to me, you know. Have they got another settlement? That's, that's down, that's Gaul. That's there. That's that's theirs. That's not theirs. That's not theirs either. I don't think that is. I think they've got one. If this is their faction leader, yeah. If that's their faction leader, that's probably their last settlement. So um, once we've finished replenishing in Tarentum, rather than going to Capua next, what we're actually going to do is we're going to bring this boat across, hop across, and capture and take Apollonia. Does leave us a little. We'll have to be careful that we don't leave ourselves too undefended here. The Skippy to come wading in, um, which they shouldn't do. And then we'll take the Skippy down once we've got rid of the Brutii threat. So, uh, not quite going to turn our attentions to the Skippy just yet, but we're not too far away. My eyes are yours. Spy on him. Unseen, but unseen. Bit of training. Speaking of spies, our spy in here, Mr. Six. Subterfuge Thea Propriders is now off to infiltrate uh, our next one of our next targets in the not too distant future, Capua. So off he off he pops. Uh, so the that other spy is up here, just spying on the local uh, wildlife. Excellent. So the spying and the all the agent work is uh, is complete. So let's uh, just quick save it for a second. Don't think I'm forgetting anything. So uh, yeah, I'm happy with that turn. I'm happy. If I've forgotten anything, well, so be it. But for now, we're ending the turn and seeing what happens next. Uh, no, no, there's no need for you to do that. In fact, you just sit pretty for now. Thank you kindly. Oops, I hear the sound of combat again. Who is it? Ah. Oh, I'm very thirsty. Very thirsty. Okay, let's check the news. Settlement besieged. Cyrene. 
Bodushman Lixus. Lixus has got a child that's come of age finally. That's cool. Another member of the family. We shall. Ooh, who's the most about? Oh, Egypt. Theodeclus gets his Karugan given to him by Theages. And the House of Scipio have declared war on the Gauls. We'll get to. Uh, let's just. <clears throat> is he in here? Is he, he should be in here, right? Yeah, there he is. Bodushman Lixus. Two influence, two management already. Apparently loyal. His loyalty is, qu his loyalty is uh, questionable, which is not very good. An understanding of logistics, probably uh, due to Theopanus' influence. Careful with money. Positive and reverent. Okay. Okay. So we've got plenty of family members in, in Iberia. We've got two bribed ones, and we've got three family members here. At some point, I think we're going to probably keep Theopanus here and Zixus down here. These barbarians will probably keep Oscar and New, New Mancia or something. Uh, but uh, Bodishman, we may repurpose further this way. Although he's not a combat specialty, whereas Zixus is. We may keep Bodishman over this side to learn his craft of governorship. He's more of a management kind of guy, so maybe keep him here in Café Nova alongside the Abanus, and have Zixus, who's a fully-fledged general, who's learned his trade from uh, the Abanus. Maybe we'll take Zixus with the um, those uh, Balearic Slingers and take him across to support Theodeclus against the Egyptians. His training in Iberia, alongside this great strategician, has given him a good grounding to take up his own army in the field as a reward for his service and fight alongside Theodeclus to take down the Egyptians. I think that is a good plan. I think that's a good plan and a good reward for the, for somebody who's trained alongside, uh, you know, such a, a loyal member of the family. It's about time we let him spread his wings and fly. Right, so the Spanish have not attacked us. Any further um, housekeeping will be done off camera at this point. 27,000 coins. That's always a positive to see such nice amounts swimming around in our treasury. So let's get ourselves ready and sorted here. Let's get ourselves ready and sorted. I, great Lord. Ready and sorted for what, you might ask? Well, ready and sorted for the grand embarking of some ships across to Apollonia to take down some scumbags. Now, they don't have a great deal to repel us here, and this is an auto-resolve situation if we take anything near a decent army. So what I'm actually going to do is take troops that I don't mind losing in an auto-resolve. So I'm going to leave my elephants behind, I'm going to leave my slingers behind, because I don't want to lose them in an auto-resolve. Simply take the horses, the infantry, the great general himself, the faction leader, Bizaltes the Killer. <laughs> He's gone from Bizaltes the Cunning to Bizaltes the Killer. <laughs> yeah, it's a, a, probably another self-styled moniker to strike fear into the Romans' hearts. But yes, he's going to take all of his infantry, all of his horses, the new peony infantry, we're boarding the ships and we're finishing off these brutii bastards. That's what we're doing. In the meantime, Zixus, not Zixus, Gisco Gades comes up to govern. Take the tax rate down. That should be enough to deal with um, any Scipii threat that comes for the time being. That's fine for now also. So we're just going to keep an eye on both of this. We're not overly concerned. We're not overly concerned. So that's that. Let's take him across. Let's land him on. And let's get this job done. We can't besiege it straight away. We're going to have to besiege it down. We're going to have to get the, 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 the rams built. But in the next turn, Apollonia and possibly the Brutii will be no more. Exciting times, I might say. 
which leaves us to the final act of the session. Hopefully, a bit more of a, a bit more of a straightforward battle against um, against these guys. It might even be an auto resolve, although I, I doubt it because again, there's troops we don't wish to lose here. So we'll fight it. We'll hopefully win it, and then we can end the session uh, and look forward to the next one. Right here we go. This army will fight to the death. We expect nothing less. Extra command star for fighting in the dark? Why not? If it's good enough for our leader, it's good enough for the greying Theodeculus. Where there is mutual fear, men think twice before they make aggression upon one another. We won't be thinking twice, no chance. Many brave soldiers have seen the dawn! We're not thinking twice at all. Righty-ho, chaps. Now they've got, actually, a lot of um, missile troops. So we've got to be careful here. It's just It's not the greatest of positions to find ourselves in. But what we're effectively going to do is just take forward our infantry. I'm hoping the elephants will trample the enemy general. Kind of separating themselves into a couple of ranks here, which is rather interesting. We'll move them out of Alliance formation because that's not going to help. I don't want to uh, go too close because we'll end up uh, getting peppered. But we can't afford to linger too much, so we're going to suffer some losses. We can always retreat back. a few we're gonna lose oh this is bad you know what this could be this could be a this could be a bummer this Okay, it's fine. We're losing a. F the enemy general has been killed. Okay, that's good. Now we will see the measure of these soldiers' courage. Okay, it's going. It's going. It looked a little bit ropey for a second there, but it's it's it was, <laughs> we ended up uh, taking it, swinging the battle. Okay, continue, enemies, continue. These men are perfect. They are running from the battle in terror. That's it. Just get as many as you can, mopped up. Getting a bit warmed up before we take on the Egyptians. Who's this? Who's this? So that wasn't anywhere near as bad as it initially looked like it could be when we started getting peppered by uh, missile fire. Whew. Right, okay. Glorious victory. So Our we've death. got... Sire. If we hold Sire. control, I think, you can merge. Yeah, that's it. Hold control and you merge. So we've got one set of infantry that we need to replenish. The horses are fine. Elephants are fine. So yeah, literally, it's just uh, just this, just this, this unit that's a little bit depleted, which is fine. We've got an extra slot spare as well. 
I think we're going to get another set of hoplites, and the reason why is because Egypt have got some like chariots and stuff, so you know, extra set of spears that we can put into Famine's formation could be uh, really, really handy. And uh, what we're going to also do is just pop these guys back, get them replenished, and then bring them back. But in the meantime, we're going now to uh, to go forth on our mission to watchtower this, fortify this area and basically prepare to take the fight to Egypt. They've taken uh, Siwa, they've taken, or about to take Cyrene, they continually are sending men eastwards, no, westwards, sorry. Um, they've obviously got designs and uh, inclinations to invade us and, and, and take our lands from beneath our feet thinking we're, thinking we're pushovers just because they've taken two settlements that we basically gifted to them on a plate without any resistance um, well unfortunately they're going to be sadly mistaken because the warden of the west Theodeculus is fully stocked and he's raring to exact revenge for Bomilcar so uh, yeah Bizaltes wanted the war with Egypt to go on an offensive nature rather than a defensive. Hannibal was more defensive. Hannibal is no longer with us. Not Hannibal, Hasdrubal, sorry. Hasdrubal is no longer with us. So, uh, yeah, Bizaltes is going to get his way and we are going to attack Egypt and not sit here defending. Theodeclus gets a turncoat slave. Enemy army routes. To finish the session off, what we will do is we take a quick look some of the diplomacy, the family tree, and then in the next session we shall continue onwards on our quest for glory, starting with the downfall of the Brutii. But yeah, here is our leader. Not too shabby, if I do say so. A job well done by uh, by Vizaltes' role player. And uh, yeah, hopefully Al will carry on his good his 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 good development. He doesn't need to manage. He just needs to he just needs to tell people what to do and crush the Romans on the battlefield. And that's what he's doing. So we'll we'll we we enjoy we're enjoying that. We control nineteen regions because we have lost a couple, not for long. In the next sort of ten turns, we should have another one, two, three, four. Maybe five. Another maybe five more in the next sort of ten turns. Which would take us to 24. And then we shall take it from there. So, uh, yeah. Although we have dipped below 20. it's uh, We're, we're going to be on the counter-attack very, very soon. Ranking-wise, we are second overall. Fourth in the military. Twelfth on production. First on the amount of territories. Fourth in financial. And second population. Who okay. cares? You know, ultimately, that's just arbitrary numbers. We are a mighty force to be reckoned with. Uh, in terms of the 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 the, the, uh, the graphs, it's actually not Egypt, but it's Greece, the Greek cities, who are just absolutely rocketing uh, with with through the ranks, which makes me think that when we take down the Brutii's last land, <clears throat> it puts us next to Greece. So unlike the mistake that we made with Siwa when we took a land next to Egypt, A, we don't intend to keep that settlement that we're about to take from the Brutii. We're actually going to gift it to the Greeks uh, for a bit of coin uh, without demolishing the place, of course. Uh, a, it gets us out of the firing line because we just certainly don't want to be in a war with Egypt and Greece at the same time. Um, so that's the plan. Gets us some coin hopefully strengthens the relationship with the Greek cities and it gets us out of that direct contact which could put us at war with them. So that's the plan when we do capture um, Apollonia. So yeah, it's the Greeks we need to watch out with. Uh, in terms of diplomatic standing, of course, we're in terrible relations with, with them. Uh, with regard to the Greeks, the relationships are a little bit sh not too, sh too rosy. So you know, we've got to be very careful uh, there. Uh, the Gauls, who we've now got a peace with, it could be a tentative peace because that uh, relationship is down at a whopping 0%. But hey, if they wanted a ceasefire, then surely they wouldn't be so stupid enough to attack us uh, again. It remains to be seen. 
and perhaps the final thing to check is an update to the family tree. First of all, I like this screen because it gives you an overview of the different generals. So if we look at the highest command generals, you can see, of course, Bizaltes is up there. He gets up to a whopping 10 if he's fighting Romans at night. Uh, Hasdrubal, who of course has passed away, was 5. I'm glad it keeps the, um, the old... Uh, family members here as well. Theopanus up at five. Gisco Gades, who hasn't really crossed a sword in anger on his own yet. He's up there at four. There's, a, there's, a, there's a, something to be said to, about giving him his own army and having him support uh, Bizaltes against the Julii, who are actually a force to be reckoned with. So, you know, Gisco may get an army of his own before much longer. Uh, this is Ortizi, who's supporting... Um, What's his face? Matu Genus against the last uh, settlement the, uh, of the Spanish. He's got four. And then obviously we go down from there. So these are our prominent strategicians. In terms of our uh, prominent influencers, of course, Bizaltes with his nine. Theopanus, though, has got eight. Hasdrubal and Hanno. Well, Hasdrubal with seven. Hanno with only three. Uh, yeah, look at these guys. These guys are the, uh, well, these, the two that are alive. The heir and the uh, the leader, both really high influence. Not a surprise, given their exploits and their escapades, I'm sure you'll agree. In terms of management, Hasdrubal, he was the manager. He was more of a manager of a leader. Uh, Burus up there. Uh, Zim Rida, uh, who is uh, being groomed for leadership, although for that he would... He's work on his influence a bit, but in terms of his management, right up there. Theodeculus, four. So that's quite cool. Uh, and the family tree itself, well, obviously, the last remaining brother, or the last remaining son of Hanno, is Theopanus. Bomulkar dying in battle, Burus dying in, dying in battle, Hasdrubal of old age. Uh, so Theopanus is the last remaining. Still going strong at 49, and next year he'll be start, he'll start to go grey. Uh, from Hasdrubal's line, of course, Bizaltes, the new and, and current ruler, Bizaltes the killer, he's got an adopted son, Ortizi, the vaquet, um, Zixus Lixus, son in law to Hasdrubal, uh, married Mutton Baal, has got. Uh, Two sons, two daughters, and Bodishman has come of age, soon to be probably ruling Carthago Nova as his father goes across to assist Theodeculus in Egypt. Matagenus, adopted into the, fa into the family. I say adopted, but sort of bribed into the family. It's just the way the game represents it. Married to Alyssa, taking on the Spanish. And Anubis Nefarious came into the family and then died less than a year later, I think, uh, of, uh, of plague. His young son is coming of age soon. Theages, Warden of Sicily. Three sons and a daughter. Son coming of age very shortly. I'm going to be really intrigued to see how Xenophanus turns out. Um, so, so that's going to be that's going to be nice. Theodeclus just about to start uh, his assault on the Egyptians. Three children. His daughter, who's 20, is yet to marry. Protagonia, the elephant lover. There she is. We've got uh, Yeehaw, governor of Carthage. Two sons, three sons and a daughter. Did very, done very well for himself. Um, more of a manager. But he's got, he's got fighting capabilities as well. So again, if we need any assistance against Egypt, he's also a potential. Gisco Gades supporting Bizaltes in Italy, married with a son and a daughter. Theopanus with his one son, two daughters, soon to be back in Cordoba, all being well, where he will uh, rule, oversee the settlement, to ensure it doesn't rebel again, and uh, yeah, earn his rest. He's 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 earned it. Uh, I'm ready to take up the mantle. So something something happened to Bizaltes in Italy. And finally, Bomulkar died, of course, drunken in battle against the Egyptians at Siwa. His uh, eldest son, just come of age, currently uh, training alongside Theages in the arts of management. Oldest daughter yet to marry. And another son coming of age very, very soon. So another family member. 
and a younger daughter too. So that is the family as it currently uh, sits. And again, it's the role players that brought the, the family to life. Hence why I know instantaneously about the bloody whole lot of them and their escapades and stuff. So it's absolutely fantastic how this uh, story has developed, especially with the likes of some of these uh, family members such as Theopanus and Bizaltes who have, who have come through the ranks, who have gained experience in combat and developed. Um, it's been absolutely fantastic. So yes... I'm going to go for a cup of tea now, so uh, I've really enjoyed this session, really have. In the next one, as I said, we're taking down the Brutii, Eye, and then the Skippy Eye will soon follow, which puts us in direct contact with Rome. Rome may fall soon, my friends, and that will be a monumental event in the campaign. But more of that in the episodes to come. Until then, I'll see you soon.